Welcome to the channel, my name is Lee Middleton, and in this video I'm going to get into one of the suggestions I had for a YouTube video, which is communicating with different personality types, and I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on that, and some strategies I use to communicate with a team or with people of different personality types in general, and that's going to lead me into the importance of team building. My name is Lee Middleton, that's me in the white helmet. I created this channel so you can optimize your leadership abilities and boost your team's performance. Whether your team environment is in firefighting, sports, or business, there will be something here for you. I had an amazing 13-year career as a wildland firefighter with the Alberta Rap Attack program. I started leading rappel crews when I was 22 years old and learned so many valuable leadership lessons. The Alberta Rap Attack program fell victim to budget cuts in 2019, so I decided to share my knowledge and experience with leadership in a high-performance team environment. So I'll start the video off with talking about what we mean by different personality types. Now, I know there's tons of personality tests and assessments out there. I did a quick Google search and there's just pages that came up of different personality types. Everyone's trying to sell their tests. So, um, you know, I've done them in university. I've done them with leadership training and work and just on my own time out of personal interest. And I do see a little bit of value in, in the personality type tests. But when it comes to real world application and real communication with people one on one or within a group, I really don't put much stock in it and you know it's never something I ever thought about when I was communicating with someone so I really wouldn't get hung up on this personality type or the personality assessment kind of thing I don't know what you want to call it but I wouldn't get too hung up on that and so in this video I'm going to kind of get into the three strategies or three things you want to think about when you're communicating with people and then I'm going to get into the importance of team building and how to do team building properly and effectively. So the first thing that comes to mind when we're talking about communicating with different personality types is that to other people, you've got a different personality. So you really need to think if you're getting your message across, are you explaining why it's important? Do they know what their expectations are and why those expectations are what they are? And are you asking this person for input, for feedback? You know, how do they view you in a leadership position? Are you getting your message across clearly? Are you listening to what they have to say and actually putting that into action. So, you know, it's really important to, to give yourself that self-assessment and to get that feedback in a leadership role to say, hey, am I communicating clearly? Maybe I'm the problem. So uh, it's really important to frame it in that sense to say, you know, not just to say like this person's got a different personality, but you need to think, hey, am I doing the right job in communicating my message? And the second thing that comes to mind is do you know what's motivating your team members individually or as a whole? So it's really important to understand, you know, where your team is coming from, where your teammates are coming from. So, you know, what are they there to accomplish? What are their goals? What are they striving to achieve? And, you know, do they have some expectations or milestones they're actually trying to accomplish? Or are they trying to improve a certain skill or a certain uh, aspect of their job? And to find out what's motivating them, you have to talk to them and ask them that. You can't just, you know, assume what it is or say this personality assessment says this is what's motivating them. All you have to do is have that conversation and say, you know, hey, what are you here to achieve? What are your goals? What are your expectations? You know, are you looking to improve on anything? Are you looking for training and development opportunities? Because, you know, if you're leading a team, people most for the most part in my experience don't really come up and say that outright um, that's something you really have to kind of ask them and prod into that to get the answer so it's it's really just asking questions and listening and doing something with that feedback that you get and once you do that once you you know engage with your team and you know figure out what they want out of their career or out of their job or out of their spot on the team is you're gonna get a lot more respect and then you know that has like a, a snowball effect because once they see that you're taking them seriously and that you're actually interested in what their goals are what they want to accomplish then they're just gonna come up with this stuff to you they're not you're not gonna to have to ask them all the time um, they're gonna feel comfortable coming up to you and saying hey can we do this today like can we work on that or can I start this project and 
you know, that's really gonna break down all those communication barriers that you may be experiencing. So the third thing that comes to mind is, do you know your team members on a personal level? So I'm not talking about, you know, knowing it, like everything about them, their family, all their hobbies and interests, all that kind of stuff. I'm just saying like, do you talk to them and say, hey, how was your weekend? Like, what did you get up to? That kind of thing and just get to know them outside of like who they are outside of your organization or your job or your sport. So. This really goes a long way and it'll break down a lot of those communication barriers that you have to say, hey, every conversation doesn't have to be about work or the job we're doing. So like the small talk really does go a long way and you'll get to know who that person is on a personal level, what they're interested in, what they're not interested in. And, you know, that's going to build a lot of trust and rapport with the team members individually or as a whole when they can relate to you a little bit more if you're in a leadership position maybe they see you as like you know a really intimidating person or something like that but when you you know just say oh i had a terrible weekend this happened this happened they, they'll be like oh yeah I had the same thing happened and boom you have a, a solid relationship building so it's really important to understand the importance of that when it comes to communicating with your team members and the best way to do this in my opinion is through doing a team building exercise now when it comes to team building, I used to roll my eyes when we would uh, be planning a team building exercise or be doing one. I just, I was more interested in, you know, doing work and being productive personally. But now that I look back and after doing all my research, I really do see the importance and the value in team building. And, you know, this doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Honestly, the more simple you make it, the more effective it's going to be as long as you do it with a purpose. And shortly here, I'll go through, you know, I think I have seven like key steps for making an effective team building exercise. So I'll go through that in a second here as well. But it doesn't have to be something elaborate. It doesn't have to be a two day event. You don't have to hire people to come up with this stuff for you. And, you know, putting together a team building exercise can be a great team building exercise in and of itself. So with that, let's get into the importance of team building and how to do it properly. So what does effective team building do? Well, it really enhances communication and creative thinking. So when you have new problems to solve as a team or as a group, it's really gonna force people to think a little bit differently than they normally would in your routine of your job or your sport. So um, solving those creative problems is gonna force people to communicate new ideas and new solutions to problems. And that's really gonna help people understand the importance of communication and really get people communicating in different ways they normally wouldn't. And potentially, depending on you know, how you group your team together, they're gonna to be communicating with people they normally wouldn't. So this is really an effective way to break down communication barriers, not just between ranks on your team or between leadership and your team, but between the team itself. So team building is also a great opportunity to, like I said, mix people together that maybe normally wouldn't work together or pair up together and also to remove the typical rank of your team structure. So give your developing leaders or your new team members a chance to step up into those leadership roles. And that's really a good environment to, you know, put a developing leader to say, hey, you know, you can lead this team and it's gonna be in a fun and less stressful environment than if you just tossed them into a leadership role uh, with a big project or a, a mission of some sort. So. Really important to understand the importance of mixing up that rank so that you, you know, you give people a chance to step up into those leadership positions. So one more thing before I break down the seven steps for effective team building is that, uh, you know, to break down those communication barriers and to build relationships within your team, it's really important to have a challenge, a very unique challenge or, you know, a unique problem to solve with your team building exercise. And this is really gonna show the character strengths of your team members that they might not normally show on the typical day to day. So, you know, when you think, oh, this person has this personality, they're gonna show some character strength that you maybe thought they didn't have, or they'll have some, some random skill out of nowhere they pull out to like think of some awesome solution. And that's really gonna, you know, that might turn some heads. People might say, oh my God, I didn't know this person could do that or they had this skill or, you know, they, they could take charge like that. And lastly, it's the stress of the team building environment, whether that's, you know, you're outside doing some hike or something like that, or it's just the stress of thinking creatively or coming up with these creative solutions. And that's really what forms the bond in the team. Like I said, you know, new people are gonna step up, new people are gonna show new character strengths. 
And it's really gonna get people communicating in ways they normally wouldn't and kind of exercise those muscles, so to speak. So with that, let's get into how to do an effective team building exercise. So number one is what is the purpose of the team building exercise? Is it to improve communication, get your team thinking creatively and come up with creative solutions? Is it to give developing leaders a, a chance to step up? Or is it just to have fun and you know, boost morale and get away from the routine of your team? The next step is to brainstorm ideas for team building. So come up with as much as you can. Now, if you're in a leadership position and maybe this isn't your strength or you're too busy, I'll be honest, it was never my strength coming up with ideas for this kind of stuff. So that's a great thing you can delegate to the team to come up with. And what that's gonna do is get the team bought in because they're gonna come up with an idea or an activity that they're already going to be bought into. So that's a great option there. Now, once you have all those ideas together, you need to select maybe three or just one idea and figure out what's gonna best suit the purpose for your team building exercise and implement your activities or your team building based off of what your initial purpose was. And the fourth thing here is figure out how you can maximize the amount of fun and enjoyment that your team is going to get out of the team building exercise. So very important to make it fun and you know make sure that people are looking forward to it and that's gonna really get them engaged in the team building. And the fifth thing here is think about how you can mix up the rank and the roles for your team building exercise, just so that your typical leaders or leadership group aren't leading the teams in the team building exercise. So like I say, give those developing leaders a chance to step up in this situation. And the sixth thing here is how can you introduce a little bit of friendly competition? So whether that's you know a little tournament or round robin or a one versus one kind of setup or you know putting teams against each other, but you also wanna make sure that no one's gonna be stuck on the sidelines if they get out of the tournament, for example. So make sure everyone can have a chance to be involved, whether they're winning or losing in your competitive uh, team building exercise. And the seventh step here is to figure out the logistics. So you know, if you're going to do a hike or you're going to do paintball or something like that, or you're renting out a community center, and if you need equipment, make sure you have all that organized so that it runs smoothly and delegate those tasks off. So really important to make sure that, you know, you get everything done properly so that people are gonna be engaged and, you know, they're gonna come out of it saying, hey, that was a great experience. And one thing you wanna do after you've done your team building exercise is to have an after action review. So you know, did the team enjoy it? Did you meet the purpose you initially set out? And were the ideas good? So you wanna get the feedback from the team to make sure they actually enjoyed it and they wanna do it again, or maybe they don't. And uh, also it's something you wanna implement somewhat frequently. So, you know, think about how often you'd like to do team building. And like I said, it can just be a fun activity. It doesn't have to be some new creative challenge or anything like that but it's really important to, to kind of revisit that to make sure communication or creative thinking is staying on track. So, um, you know, think about what's appropriate in your situation. How often do you wanna do a, a fun activity or some team building within your team? If you're looking for an online course that's gonna improve your team's cohesion and get your team performing at a higher level, click the link in the description and it's gonna take you to my high performance team development course. And if you have any comments or suggestions on future videos, throw that down in the comments section below. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more leadership content.